Well hello and welcome back to Road Warden. The adventure continues so let's just dive right into this shall we? Uh, you wipe the dust off the steps but before you sit down you hear the man's annoyed voice. Now don't get too homey. It's the only place here that's not just ashes and debris and I'm not sharing it. You better ride ahead. I already piled up whatever hasn't rotten. The candle lights are dancing on his burnt face and arms. He moves his crossbow just enough to make sure he won't shoot you by accident. I saw your horse. Maybe you could help me, hmm? What are you looking for in this place? You don't sound like you're from the north. Well, I am from the north. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I want to make sure they're undead. I need to get to know the peninsula if I'm going to patrol it. I'm shot on dragon bones. I want to see if there was anything left behind. I was wondering what caused this place to collapse. I've heard about some bandits. Uh, I'm looking for another road one. And, oh, yeah, I'm looking for a Sterian. Yeah. I, I've... I've never met him. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but I've surely heard his name many times. He vanished long before I, could, I got to the coast. At first people were asking about him. Now they think he's dead. Listen, he scratches his eyes nervously. I'm hungry, so damn hungry. I can't hunt or fish with all the ape, ape men around. Can you share anything, Roadster? I may be a drifter, but I'll... Blah, wouldn't beg if I had not lost my bags on the road. Eh, I don't know. I don't like your attitude towards me. I'm not sure. Uh, mm, yeah, God damn it. Fine, fine, fine. You can have something. I'm feeling sorry for you. Um, cereal crackers, fruit cubes. Yeah, I'll give some cereal and crackers. Why not? He lets out a relieved breath. I may, I may even boil it. After a moment of hesitation, he grabs a cracker. Without you, I would have, would have to run after birds with my ballista. I um, need to save the bolts for Aitman. And because of those stinkers, I can't roast here. And raw meat makes me want to puke. Thank you. After a couple of solid bites, he puts your gifts in two wooden bowls. Now roadster, he says with a full mouth. If you have questions, ask. I'll say a lot to make you get me out of here. Okay, uh, uh, oh god, um, this entire nut and treasures left. Heard about some bandits, yeah. I've heard about some bandits. Have you seen any hideouts nearby? No, nah, I think they are in the north or east. I stuck to the western road and no shell bothered me. Sorry, can't help you. Um, have you searched the entire village? You came to the wrong place. Time, moisture, and the damn boar has devoured all the loot. I've been here for a couple of days now, and all that's left is, is this iron I carried here. I was planning to get back here with some hired muscle and clear the elapsed buildings, but I'll doubt it's worth the time and risk. Okay, I don't get the impression that you are going to give me too much. What about... Yeah, you know what? Where do you want to travel? Where do you want to go? Let me exp explain first, I. I was in Howlsdale, the closest village to east and north, and people are nice, you know? Not like old Pagos. They're all boring and grimmer than a crow. But they cry coin for everything, and damn good coin I left. I wanted to look around the ruins, see if there, see if there's anything left. Then move to Pelt and hire the hunters to help me there. Help me here. Now look, a bunch of griffs jumped my pack bird. I just bought it. He spits on the floor. Fast and nimble. Not brave enough to listen to me when all that screeching and scratching started. So it ran away with my bags. A few fell on the ground and I pulled them here. Do you see how it is? I won't travel around with a tent on my back. He taps the crossbow with his fingers. I need maybe a day or more, aye, just a day, and I'll have all the iron scrapped from the barrels so I can move forward. We well, can't take all my stuff alone, and without me around the eight men, I'm going to break in and steal all my shit. I need to stay here, but since you have a horse, come back tomorrow and help me return to Howler's Dell. How about it? I just need to know the road is safe. Safe as it can be, I mean. Uh, I mean, I don't work for free. I'm a busy man. I've got a lot on. <laughs> um, the nicety is going to overtake me here, I think. What exactly do you want me to do? I need you to make sure there's no danger hiding on the road. From here to Howler's. Or rather, I know there is some danger. 
as long as you can get there and safely return, I'm sure we can handle some roaming monsters. He theatrically rubs his hands together. This ballista has hit more beast skulls than I have fingers, and I've never lost a finger, wrote Sir, only the toes. Maybe to prove it, he starts to count on his fingers. They'll see if the, <laughs> the road there is clear. Then come here tomorrow, we'll pack my stuff on your horse and move out. But don't come when it's close to evening. We're going to need three hours on our feet, and I won't push through the night. Even sleeping next to an apeman tribe is safer, he chuckles. And don't make me wait for too long. I can wait for a couple of days if I find some food, but if you don't get back, I'll have to risk it no matter what. Why howl as Dell? If you want to go south, we should travel to the belt of the north. I mean, I see your point, but I've never been there. Can they afford my iron? Do they have the means to pay for it? I need coins to find a handy bunch that will walk south with me, and I need new staff. And bolts. I know the village. It's a nice place and even has a smithy of sorts. Uh, I had the chance to take a look. It's a large, uh, a large inn, a safe one. They seem to be rich and have enough hunters to guide yourself. You can get iron to barter. <coughs> okay. Well, it's a shorter path, I guess. Fewer spots to get surrounded by corpses. If, if you're sure it's the best option, fine. I'll trust a roadster's judgment. Cool. I don't work for free. <laughs> I have ways to pay you, don't worry, I can give you dragon. dragons, I'll have to sell the iron first, so I'll need a bit of time, you see. Five for a short escort would be plenty, I'd say, but if you want, I'll give you a, a secret jar of mine, a very fine mixture that scares Aitman away. Works on pebblers too. When you ask if all the stench of urine is somehow related to this potion, he just winks and chuckles. <laughs> cool. Uh, fine, it's a deal, I'll escort you. Thanks, Roadster, just come tomorrow, I'll make it worth your time. Cool. Time for me to leave. Let's uh, go. Right. The closer you are to the village and the longer you, st uh, you stay around, the sicker you feel. The taste of gastric juices hits your mouth. Your forehead hurts. You start to stumble. Nick Clegg, worried by the sight, pokes your head with its nose. <laughs> uh, I have to walk away. This is, this is too much. Leaning on your mount, you go outside, keeping your mouth shut. After a few minutes, you, your eyes get clearer. Maybe better to leave, or at least stay away from the village for the rest of the day. Uh, let's see, I mean, still return to the southern gate. Field southwest. Uh, but there, I haven't discovered. So. The tracks of human footwear and many, many more ape footprints cover the path formed around the palisades breach as far as you can tell the freshest footprints lead to the village the wooden stakes spread on the ground are rotten covered in mushrooms small flowers insects and worms a good source of animal or goblin food though you'd expect them to also hunt the birds and eggs the meadow in the west turns into a forest quickly the grasses in the north surrounded dozens of tree stumps already covered in moss and fungi i shouldn't enter the forest especially not in this area it's unpredictable i agree you know what, I agree, even though that was my only option, but I do agree. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's inspect the pasture to the southeast. You don't find a single sign of livestock that lived here in the past. Any bones, horns, antlers, or dung have already been devoured by the wilderness. The pasture ends at the river. On the opposite bank, the meadow turns into a thick forest, impenetrable for a rider. What are the chances that a herd of defenseless animals could get there and survive? The breach in the southern fence wasn't made by some brute force. You can axe cut in, you can axe cuts in the spots that were ultimately broken away. After all these years there are no tracks that you could follow. I return to the main road. I inspect the clearing to in the west. Let's do it. The meadow is lush and colourful and so dense it's unsafe for a rider. For a couple of minutes you lead Nick Clegg with a rope, avoiding potential disaster in case of a hoof falling into an animal den. Being forced to travel around the palisade every time you get here is going to be a pain. Most of the tree trunks look similar and have a comparable size. They were most likely planted with the sole purpose of being cut down and used by the locals, though cutting so many trees at once, that alone could provoke the wrath of the herds. Such a process should be spread across a couple of seasons, and you can't be sure that this was the case. In the west and north, the clearing turns into a wild forest. In the east, you see a road leading north. I leave the clearing. Uh, let's see. I inspect the fields in the southwest. 
You're surrounded by what looks like a field ploughed in late autumn, disturbed by hundreds of rain and snowfalls. There are a few clumps of grass and wheat, but a place like this one, abandoned for years, should already have turned itself into a green leaf. A barren field? Maybe it was overused, but you would still expect the weeds to sprout. A curse? The path leading west from here ends at the edge of the field, shifting into a meadow, then a forest. Spell. Yeah. Use my amulet to sense if there's a new Numa buried in this place. Yeah? Sure, let's do it. You unpack the wooden spheres, pleasantly smooth and light. The entire set fits in the palm of your hand. You place them in various spots, marking their positions by sticking a branch in the soil. All you can do now is wait. So you brush Nick Clegg for a bit and make sure the saddle doesn't bother it. When you return to gather your amulets, all of them are much warmer than your skin. The entire field is corrupted, though seeing how there are already some plants growing from it, the spell is fading away. The curse is most likely as old as the last harvest. Harvest. I walk away. I need these amulets to cool off. Indeed. Uh, right, let's go to the road leading north. Let's check this out. You are you are at the closed northern gate. The neglected road is partially overgrown. You hear a river in the east, separated by lush meadow, filled with crickets and rodents. I take a closer look at the gate. Pushed or pulled, it doesn't move an inch. Someone has spread dirt and rocks both underneath it and around it, seemingly to keep the planks stuck in the ground. I go somewhere else. Uh, let's head to the river, I think. You see a quenching family of boars, some of them brown, some black. You consider turning back, but they pay you little attention. After a couple of grunts, they run north. The river is not too wide, yet unusually deep, with banks altered by the locals for decades, if not centuries. The water is cold and clean, yet filled with long plants growing from the bottom. You would rather avoid jumping inside or drinking from it, but you're tempted to at least wash your face, neck and hands. Dozens, if not hundreds, of small fish are looking for tasty leaves, but also try to avoid their predators. A dance of life completely unaware of your presence. You suddenly realise there's something else buried among the kelp. A rusty sickle sticking out of the ground. A couple of stone axes and hoes. The wooden handles and a large wagon are covered with moss, but you you recognise their shapes. Why would someone drop them here? On the opposite bank, the meadow turns into a thick forest, impenetrable for a rider. Well, I turn back. Uh, let's see. Spend some time setting up a fish trap at the bank. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. You place the basket on the ground and grab a bowl and start digging, looking for a few larger worms. You bait the stick and push it inside the basket, locking it between the sides, then cover the entrance with the lid. Tying it together takes you a few good moments, but it will be easier later on. You attach the entire trap to a bush and push it into the stream, far enough that it sinks entirely. Who knows how long it will take before something large enough swims inside. Still, it would be better to not wait for too long, otherwise the prey may die of hunger. I step away. The pain in your stomach slows down. Where do you want to go? Uh, consider washing myself, maybe? Yeah. The living stream filled with fish and plants won't help you too much. You, oh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't have bathing equipment. Okay, I step away. Turn to the southern gate. Uh, not much has changed in the broken gate. I approach the building near, near the field. Yeah, the broken logs and planks are charred, while the wooden walls are rotten and covered in moss. You see no ashes or dust, proving that the fire happened long ago. The smell is awful, and there are no reasons to stay for long. You see no furniture, just some broken shelves. It was just a storage room. The valuable odds and ends were already taken by scavengers. Move forward. Uh, I think we just need to go, right? Yeah, I think we need. I think we're done here. Let's just carry on. Onwards. You enter the wetlands with their many streams, ponds and fish. Large birds run and fly between the grey, sparse trees that are covered with moss, mushrooms and critters. For a human, it may be an unwelcoming and harsh realm, but the overwhelming swarms of insects prove that it's a realm full of life. The danger with teeth and claws is hidden below the water's surface. Stay away from the banks. Probably a good idea. Oh, this is nice. This plant shouldn't be alive, not without leaves. It doesn't resemble the other trees of the wetlands. It's something else. You get off your horse and prepare your axe. The water is filled with dirt and dead plants, and it smells like an old corpse. 
The roots are spreading far, breaking through the water's surface. You don't see any saurians in the grasses or on the shore. You approach the table-like altar made of three limestone slabs. Were these rocks originally as formless as they are now, or was there a point in time centuries ago when they were precisely shaped and decorated by masters of artistry? There's no way to tell. Nick Clegg is peacefully observing the dark grass and slapping flies with its tail. Whatever it is that you feel in the air, it's clear that your companion sees this place with very different eyes. Uh, you know what, I, I just smile and scratch the bottom of Nick Clegg. Go ahead, I'll look around for just a moment. You don't see any creatures nor humans. I approach the altar? Okay, there's clumped dirt and uneven nicks, fused by years of winds and rains. The bottom surface of the table is dusty, but you don't find any spider webs or mold. Even though it's a perfect spot for them, the tree roots cling to the altar in many spots. They're firmly attached. You struggle to move them by an inch. The cream coloured limestone is cold and smooth. Let's see. Try to make it an offering spell, maybe? Oh, I've only got two out of five. I don't know if I want to. But it seems like there's something here. It feels like there's something here. Can't be something here, right? I use an amulet to detect if there's any magic in the altar. There's got to be something here, surely. They wouldn't tease me like this. You unpack the wooden spheres, pleasantly smooth and light. The entire set fits in the palm of your hand. You place them in various spots on the altar, next to the roots beneath it. And a few steps away on the boulder, you begin the ritual, after which all you can do is wait. You go for a walk with Nick Clegg, making sure there are no monsters in your vicinity. When you return to collect your amulets, only the one placed on the rock hasn't changed its temperature. The others are cold. The closer they are to the tree roots, the cooler they are, almost painfully so. This is not what was supposed to happen. If the objects are filled with magic, the spheres get warmer. If not, they stay in their original state. But this, you've never seen such a reaction. I try something else. Okay, uh, that was disappointing. Uh, I mean, I don't really have a lot, do I? Nice, window glass, food. I don't have a lot to offer. I really don't. Ugh. Coins, maybe. I mean, food. I, I, the only things I can really offer is food and coins. I don't have a lot on me at the minute, so let's sure let's try food. See what it says. But any type of food you can uh, find in your sacks on the nearby plants, but none of them seem to make any difference. I try something else. I make an offering. Coin. You put both your pouch and the coins on the altar, but nothing happens. Okay, so I, I don't think I have what it wants because I don't have a lot on me and I definitely need more magic stuff so I'm gonna walk away from this don't see any creatures nor humans I look into the water you step cautiously without knowing how deep it gets you have to consider that a saurian might be camouflaged in the mud waiting for a victim to get near since you don't plan to kneel down or drink you're hoping to dodge a potential strike once you get closer you start breathing again while the water is dirty it's also shallow you see the vegetation swimming insects and even small fish all of them staying away from the tree roots, which look like a spider web covering the bottom of the pond. Aside from that, you don't see anything that would catch your attention. Ah, uh, okay, I think I think we can just carry on moving, right? Where do I want to be? I think we're going north, aren't we? I feel like we're going north. Let's carry on going north. Do it. You slow down among the shrubs, a small pack of dragonlings is feasting on the carcass of a great orc. One of them, with red feathers on its arms, straightens up and gives you a curious glance. Its head tilts left and right, forward and back. It screeches at you, but doesn't move forward and returns its meal. Returns to its meal. Uh, you wonder what would happen if you were not on foot. Would they let you be, satisfied with their prey, or would they run after you? But if so, for what reason? For now, you have enough space to move forward yet safe. The powerful jaws break the monster's bones wildly, then bite and swallow chunks of meat. I ride forward. But I keep my distance. Feels like a good idea. The beaten road serves your palfrey well. The forest to your left becomes sparse and brighter, and there are dozens of human made paths along the fruit bearing trees. On your right, there's a large pasture with at least a dozen massive. Oh, mouflons? Mouflons? Sure. Two of them already sheared look comically small. Soon after that, you ride along vast, flourishing fields filled with rye, still green preparing itself patiently for the second harvest. 
The path ends with a massive wooden gate, stone walls separating you from the glow of the light behind it. Isn't as tall as the roofs, but you can't imagine climbing to its top. There are pretty much no cracks, no missing bricks, a sign of many hours of labour, especially considering how massive the settlement is, as wide as a city district. The birds and monkeys are now just a distant echo, replaced with the sound of carts running, hammers, saws, laughter and shouts. Uh, maybe I can rest here. Yeah, that sounds good. A young man is leaning against the closed gate, covered by its shadow. He's young, tanned, and has a short, elegantly trimmed red beard. Beneath the green gambeson, he wears an expensive tunic decorated with colourful trim. From his heart, from his ham, from his arm hangs a steel helmet, though the metal is so thin that it's mostly made of wool and leather. He moves into the light and takes on the posture of a disciplined soldier, not a mercenary. He's standing upright with his chin up. There are two weapons on the ground, leaning on the wooden beams of the gate. An axe made of steel and a wooden club. He doesn't reach for either. You dismount smoothly, still having some vigour left. Nick Clegg holds its tail high. A narrow path leads north towards two field workers. One with a hoe and one with a pitchfork. They wave to you. You can't see their faces, but their clubs are simple. Grey pants and vests, made from hemp and wool. Uh, yeah, you know what, I wave back, why not? <clears throat> they talk for a bit, looking towards you and pointing at your mount, then walk away, disappearing behind the wall's corner. The guard smiles, yet avoids your eyes, and has to clear his throat before he speaks. Welcome, traveller. If you're if you're near here to make trouble, Aulasdale welcomes you. <laughs> uh, we have the whitest flower there is. When he bows, you realise it's a well-practised performance. If it's new garments you're looking for, you can order everything you need right here in all colours, shapes and sizes. Capes, boots, vests, robes. If you're yourself a master of the needle, I can assure you we have the fabric you're looking for. His act is over and he glances at your mount in a moment of silence. His eyes get wider as he observes it with a childlike fascination. Um, <laughs> Do I introduce Nick Clegg? No, we ain't got time for that. I'm Jack. I want to see a mayor. A city folk, eh? The mayor is busy, but I'll ask her. Give us a moment to let you in. He knocks at the gate, which is then pulled inwards by two other guards, a man and a woman, wearing their own gambesons. Similarly green, but tailor-made to match their figures. The nearby buildings are simple houses made of wooden beams and covered with thatch, while the storehouse is even more modest, with a roof made of planks. The watchtower has a ladder made of ropes and sticks. No stairs. Just give me a moment. The guard strides away before he finishes the last word. The others close the gate behind you and observe your mount carefully. Your eyes run east to a humming creek running through the centre of the village. I wait for the return of the messenger. Charming sound, I. That's Howler's Creek. The guard, like most of the locals, is taller than you. Wide but shallow. There's never been a flood in years. Pa told me they used to be near bridges. Neighbours crossed it with their boots in their hands, and it is clean like a raindrop. But there are there are n many fish. <laughs> Where the cleanest village in the north, her companion chuckles brightly. When the guard returns, he's still alone. She can may come now. A friend of mine is in labour, I the mayor wants to be there when the child arrives, but I was asked to show you the village. I nod fine. Fine, I say. Fine. He approaches the watchtower. Tie your mount here. We'll keep the kids away. Most of the neighbours are getting ready to celebrate. Once you're done, he grabs the rope ladder. The view from up there is gorgeous. I climb after him. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's a trap. It's a trap. It's not a trap. Surely not. It can't be a trap. I climb after him. Even though the ladder swings in all directions, the guard gets to the top quickly, like a monkey climbing up creepers. You, on the other hand, need to stop and wait for the lad to scar itself. When you join the man on the wooden platform, you're a bit dizzy. He's leaning on the wooden parapet, observing the area with a smile. I look around. Wow! Ho! Oh, beautiful! God, I love the art in this game. It's fantastic. See, there's no place like Howler's Dale. The guard points in every direction, giving you no time to contemplate. For the next few minutes, he describes the fields and their crops. The flocks in the pastures and the shepherds inspecting the fences. The ancient garden of trees and bushes. 
larger than the village itself, the sunlight dancing on the stream to its own tune. If you are to believe everything he describes, this place has access to everything in abundance. The sweetest honey, the most fragrant bread, the softest wool, and the beer, tis excellent. He sounds like a city merchant who's trying to sell an old horse. What an annoying kid. <laughs> uh, near Hovlaven, you could find five larger and richer settlements in less than two days. Nah, I mean, this looks like a nice place. This look like a nice place. No wonder he's so proud. Why wouldn't he be? They've turned the scrap of land and living comfort. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just happy to find a settlement, honestly. The isla in the middle that connects both parts of the village. According to the man, the northern gate is hardly ever opened, as it leads near where, near where now, God. The language is something I'm struggling with a little bit. <laughs> near the eastern gate, there's a, the Ape Ale Inn, where you can find a bed and victuals. And there's the stall where Akakios, 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 sure. Akakios rewards our work. Unless we annoy him with pointless talk, he lets us out. He lets out a chuckle. On the opposite side of the creek, there's another white house. It belongs to Bion, the best clothier in the north. The priests live in the south uh, southeast near the wall, but they do they do not talk to strangers. You also hear about the hunter, the cooper, the fisher, the miller. The pie maker lives with his sister, the baker, the smith, and her husband, the carpenter, live with their kids. Some of the large buildings could accommodate two, maybe even three generations at once. There could be more than a hundred dwellers here. You consider stopping his speech, but he suddenly points at the Isla again. There, see? The mare's coming. The one wearing purple. You are free to join her, traveller. And I think that is going to be where I'm going to stop for now. We will pick up with the mare next time. So yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching, hope you still enjoy these videos, I do like this style of game, I like this very re relaxed approach, um, the whole text based thing, it's, it's good, it's nice, I love it, it's a very nice chill game and I do like this game very much. So with that in mind, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you next time, bye!